today. Graham here. I'm going to talk about fly loops, the physics of fly loops, what makes them tick, what makes them stop, how do they work. I'm going to use Newton's three laws. We're not actually going to use any of those, any of the maths in those laws, just the concepts contained in those laws. There's a lot of confusion out there about what happens inside that loop, where the tension is, where the forces are, what drives that loop forward, why it stays in the air even. Hopefully some of what we're about to show here makes it a little bit easier for you to understand. So to start with, let's define the loop. We have the fly leg connected to the fly, the loop nose, which is on the left here, and the rod leg, which is connected to the rod tip. Let's get into it. Let's look at a normal cast. We accelerate the line using the rod up to the required speed. As the line overtakes the rod tip, it becomes the fly leg, while tension applied at the rod leg stops its forward motion, and that line becomes part of the rod leg as well. So Newton's first law is that an object will remain in a steady state of motion unless it is acted upon by a force, and that includes stationary. That's a steady state of motion. Here we've got the fly leg stationary at the top of the image, and tension is applied to the rod leg. Notice that we don't need to do anything to the fly leg except pull it with the rod leg to create a loop. Now that's a really important point, so I'm going to say it again. You don't need to do anything to the fly leg except apply tension through the rod leg to make a loop. During the cast, it's the momentum of the moving mass in the fly leg that produces tension in the rod leg. I'm going to apply Newton's first law here and have the fly leg stationary, which is a steady state of motion. And then I'm going to apply a force to it in the form of tension through the rod leg. And as expected, the fly leg maintains a steady state of motion until it is acted upon by the force exerted by the rod leg. So let's do the same thing with a moving frame of reference. So once again, the fly leg maintains its steady state of motion as the rod leg applies a force to it. Now Newton's second law of motion says that when we apply a force we accelerate the mass. That's what we're seeing here. We're seeing the mass accelerating from one state of motion to another state of motion. And once again from a different point of view, we're now seeing the rod leg applying a force to the fly leg, accelerating that fly leg away from its steady state of motion. Now I guess that doesn't really look like a cast just yet. It's got a similar appearance, but when you speed them up, you can see that it really does get very close to what we expect to see from a cast. And if you look carefully, you can even see a dolphin nose in this cast. We keep mentioning the term steady state of motion, but that's just another term for constant velocity. That velocity is reached once the rod straightens. While we're casting, we're accelerating that line. When we stop the cast and the line starts to overtake the tip, the line is now in a steady state of motion. So steady state of motion just means that the fly leg now has constant velocity. The fly leg will maintain that velocity until it reaches the rod leg. It will maintain that speed just like any other projectile. It will just keep going until something stops it, and in this case, it's the rod leg. So let's look at that again with some relative directions here. We've got the fly to the west of the rod. The fly line is moving east of the rod tip. It's moving with a constant velocity. The loop is moving east of the rod tip as well. And the fly will finish with a straight line east of the rod tip. So let's look at that in slow motion on the ground. We have the fly to the west of the rod tip. So the fly leg has attained a steady state of motion. In this case, it's stationary. However, it is being accelerated away from that steady state of motion by the tension in the rod leg. So as the rod leg pulls all of the line out of the fly leg, the fly finishes east of the rod tip. Here's another cast, with the fly starting west of the rod tip. The line is accelerated to a constant velocity, which it maintains as it moves eastward, until it is stopped by the tension in the rod leg. At the completion of the cast, the fly ends up east of the rod tip. Newton's third law is pretty simple. It just states that, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. The momentum of the fly leg pulls on the loop end of the rod leg, 
and the loop end of the rod leg pulls on the fly leg, stopping its forward motion at that point. Both pulls are equal and opposite. There is also a pull on the rod tip via tension in the rod leg, and the rod tip pulls back on the rod leg with the same force. Is that all? Are there any other factors? Well, of course there's fly leg momentum, and there's tension from the rod tip, and there's gravity, but there are other factors that come into play during the flight of the loop. Things like tension from air drag on the fly and on the fly leg itself, air drag on the nose of the loop, and there is a small amount of tension coming from the loop itself, produced in a similar manner to the B-chain experiments that are found on the internet. I'll post a link to some scientific discussions on those B-chain experiments in the comments section below. That small amount of tension that I've mentioned there, you can actually see the effect of that at the end of some of these casts that I've shown in this video. As the loop hits the taper of the fly line and hits the leader, you'll see that fly rapidly accelerate right at the very end. There's only a small amount of mass, so that weak force can accelerate the fly, even though it's not the main driving force for the fly leg. During the casting stroke, we accelerate the line according to Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration. When the rod straightens, it is no longer mm -hmm. applying a force to the line, and the line will continue with that velocity until the end of the cast. So the loop forms as the fly leg overtakes the rod tip, and we get tension forming in the rod leg. The fly leg already has the momentum it needs to finish this cast. The loop doesn't need to pull it, it's going to go there in any case. Newton's first law of motion says that the fly leg will continue on with this steady state of motion until it hits the rod leg. After the rod straightens, there's no way we can change the course of that cast. So let's review those laws as they relate to the fly cast. Newton's first law says that an object will remain at a constant motion until acted upon by a force. So the fly leg maintains its speed until something stops it, namely the rod leg. When we apply Newton's second law, it means that any force that we apply to the line will affect some sort of acceleration to that line. It'll change its state of motion. Newton's third law says that for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. For instance, when the fly leg pushes on the rod leg, the rod leg pulls back on the fly leg. I hope this video has helped you to understand some of the physics occurring in a fly cast. If you do have any questions, please post them in the comments below and I'll try and answer them for you. Thanks for watching, see you on the water.